Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to discuss and understand about the seismic diffraction. So this is a, this will be a general overview of seismic diffraction, why these are important and how does it produce. So I will start from the very basic of understanding the seismic diffraction. So there are two learning outcome of this video lecture. So the first learning outcome of this video as you will be able to understand the concept of diffraction in geophysics and the second objective or learning outcome of this video lecture is to you will be able to distinguish the diffraction in the seismic section during the processing. So once you are able to distinguish the diffractions then you will not removing that diffraction considering them as a noise. So that will be ultimate goal of this lecture. So let's start from the basic. So now uh, the diffraction concept is actually the funda fundamental uh, concept in light wave or the wave propagation and it's actually heard of an imaging processing. So the seismic diffraction events are recognized by opposite polarity on either side of the hyperbola. So in the case of light or the light theory, so let's say if we have the light source here and it is passing through a slit and which has a hole in this slit. So when a light is passing from here, so you see this red light, so there should be a direct light here and the dark portion when it is not passing here. But in real case, what you observe, you have the direct light and you have the dark portion over here. But in between direct light and the dark portion, you have a, a very tiny light, which is called the diffracted light. And actually it is producing from these edges of the slit. So same thing is happening in every day when your sun is about to set and you will be looking at the some diffracted light at your sky during the sunset. So same thing is happening we are applying here and the diffracted light is producing because of this. So you see this, these are the propagation of the direct uh, diffracted light and appears at the blue color. I, I'm just representing the different colors, but actually it's not the blue color. So that would happen in the both side. So over here you have the dark, on the end you have the diffracted light and the direct light. So the similar way, uh, obviously when our wave is propagating, so the same case is happening in geophysics on in seismic acquisition. <clears throat> so when you have the acquisition geometry on the surface and let's say you have a uh, discontinued discontinuous reflector so your reflector is a small which is the solid black line so when you record your seismic data so you have the traces over here around this uh, reflector but on the off reflector obviously you don't have anything so because of this edges we have the diffracted uh, wave which is called the diffraction hyperbola so in this uh, you you will have this both side you have the diffracted wave let's say if you have a small point diffractor here then obviously you will have the another one but in this case we have only two edges uh, another thing uh, that the the uh, the amplitude uh, of this wave is uh, we have the phase change we phase is from positive to negative and from negative to positive so off reflector we have the positive amplitude and on all on reflector we have the negative amplitude so once um, we recorded this type of energy so it's mean there is some discontinuities so uh, another example i want to give you a quick example so let's say we have three reflectors so this is a subsurface geology and also here is some uh, geology and Actually, it's uh, follow the Huygens principle, and which is state that the each point diffractor 
the wave uh, wave front act as a point diffractor or point source generating spherical waves at each point so let's say if you have the uh, spherical waves which is following this wave so uh, we have this one this one and so on but when the uh, reflector is discontinued it's like this one so here you don't have any reflector further this one so which is point p so there you will have the diffracted wave so either this side then another diffracted wave will be on this side so which will have the positive and a negative amplitude and on off reflector you have the positive amplitude so this all come the reflected waves obviously after stacking this amplitude then you have the diffracted waves left on the off reflector so logic actually behind the uh, diffraction a uh, little bit understanding how we, we can differentiate and understand more closely to the diffractions so the diffraction hyperbola can be explained by the Huygens Fresnel principle and there are two parameters on which the diffracted waves depends on so one is the wavelength of the waves and the second is the size of discontinuity so these are two actually uh, the angle of diffraction also is directly proportional to the size of the wavelength so in this case on the figure which we are looking at the right so in the top figure you can observe that the uh, you have the small discontinuities here so over here we have the diffraction producing so you can see this is going in shape of parabola but once it recorded at the surface then it will be converted to hyperbola but when your discontinue is larger than the wavelength then obviously there will be no effect because uh, of interference effect wouldn't play a role in this section so in this case we can conclude from these two figures and also the uh, the theory so the high frequency which actually have the small wavelength so there will be lower angle of diffractions but if you have the low frequency which have the long wavelength then you have the high angle of diffraction so in this case we have the high angle of diffraction but in this case we have the low angle of diffractions so now uh, uh, looking at the point diffractor so let's say we have the surface over here and we have the actual reflector which is from a to b and the point diffractor is at zero and our source and receivers are here once the wave propagate it's actually recording from here but we don't know so we will plot it here like this is similar way because it's recording the time but we know the wave front because the wave front is uh, we, the wave is going in this direction so either this point is here or here so these are the two points so then uh, the another thing is a diffraction curve which is actually passing through this point and this point but if we know the actual velocity of the mediums so in that case you can record your diffraction and it can be imaged with proper velocity in case of point diffractor so let's say you have a point diffractor when you have source and receiver seven number of source and receivers here so when you recorded data from this point diffractor it will be appears like this one because this time will be coming to this part so it will be here this six number six will be coming here so that's why the recorded data of the point diffractors appears as a diffraction curve so now we look at the diffraction curves in 3d so let's say if we have the velocity of the medium 2000 meter per second and how the diffraction will appears in different depths so the first diffraction curve is or the uh, hyperbola is at one kilometer two kilometer three and four kilometer so if you observe from here so you can see the flank of the hyperbola is spreading out so the uh, the flanks are becoming more wider and wider with the depth so that's why uh, I'm going to show another so here if you have the velocity high 3500 meter per second then your observation will be more clear so at one kilometer you have a quite stretch hyperbola but when you go in deeper you will have the uh, spreading out so once you have very high velocity like 5000 meter per second which is normally in the case of seismic uh, 
seismic recording system. So in this case, when you have the higher velocity uh, in in a deeper area like four kilometers, so you uh, the the flanks of the hyperbola is uh, spreading out. So this is the way in this in this um, situation. Obviously, you have the difficulty of understanding the seismic diffraction. Either it's a diffraction or it's a dipping reflector or whatever. So for that purpose, actually, we we also use the diffraction separation method to differentiate either it's a diffraction or reflection. Then I'm using a different uh, case here. So it's actually increasing velocity case. So let's say the velocity is increasing of the, uh, of the by, by depth and your diffraction curves, how does it appear? So let's say uh, your velocity was 1000 meter per second and your diffraction curves like this one at one kilometer. And over here you have the velocity 3000 meter per second and the depth was four five kilometer yeah so that's why it appears like this one so this is the five kilometer and the another case you have the velocity decreasing with depth so let's say you this one is other way around so this was 1000 so now 1000 is coming here so the same velocity of the diffraction with 1000 and 1000 act differently at the different depth so from this analysis we can understand the diffraction is not only depending on the depth but not only the velocity but depth also so there are two factors of uh, diffractions uh, observation so the same diffraction um, diffraction curve at different velocity at a different depth will behave differently so this is a quite complex subject and uh, you have to understand it accordingly so now uh, why we need to consider these diffractions so now this is an example so let's say if we have a velocity model so the first layer velocity is 5 1500 meter per second and the second one is 3000 meter per second so when we have the recording system on the surface so it was actually placed uh, the total distance is 3000 and each receiver was at 10 meter interval so let's say in there was a hole in this reflector, so it was 100 meter hole. So in 100 meter hole, we have the 10 different receiver. Here are 10 different receivers and uh, this is a zero offset, so that's why we have the 10 receivers here. So uh, over here in the recorded data, you cannot observe that there is a hole in this reflector. Only if you consider this diffraction, because these diffractions are appearing here. So from this one and this one so you can observe from this diffraction that there is a hole and the second case is actually we are widening our hole in the reflector from 100 to 300 meters so from 300 meters it's we have the 30 points to be observed but still you can see that there is there is a very slight change it looks like a sink line but the hole does not appear in zero offset data so only the diffraction that actually gives you the clue of this hole in reflector so there is some discontinuity that's why you can consider this diffraction an image to get the discontinuity so when uh, we have this uh, data set uh, we recorded this data set with two different frequencies one was 30 hertz the dominant frequency and the whole size is 100 meter and the same frequency with 300 meter and the second case was 80 hertz which was the dominant frequency which is high frequency and whole length still remain 100 and 300 so now i will discuss this two figures so this is the low frequency data so as i mentioned in the previous um, previous slide that we have the low frequency then higher angle of diffraction so now here uh, you can see the low frequency where the diffractions actually um, collapse. So now this is uh, actually the unmigrated section. Then this is migrate uh, migration aperture 100 meter. So now here actually we are discussing the aperture. How does the migration aperture um, behave with the different frequencies? 
So this is 100 meter migration aperture because the whole land falls 100 meter. Then we go for 300 meter and 500 meter. So here you can see at 100 meter you can't collapse or you cannot get the hole in the reflector. But when you're using 300 and up to 500, you can get a better response. In the same case in 300 meter, so 100 you cannot get anything. 300 slightly okay, but the sharp edges of the hole you will get from 500 meter aperture line. In the same case when we are using the high frequency, so high frequency is 80 hertz. So over here you can see from 300 you can get the better response. So it's mean, and here if even you can get at 100 meter aperture you can get the better response. So here actually. Uh, what is the purpose of showing this example is to relay the frequency and diffraction and migration aperture. So the summary of this um, exercise is actually when we have the high frequency, so this is shallow penetration, so we get the high resolution. So same case is happening in medical imaging when we are doing X-ray. So for X-ray actually we are using more than 200 hertz frequency so that's why we just have to scan our body and you can see each and every bone of the human body because we are using very high frequency so we don't need very deep penetration but we need the high resolution so that one is in case of medical imaging but when we are doing the seismic so we normally use low frequency it does not mean low frequency uh, but it's uh, below 100 hertz so that's why we need deep penetration and low resolution so low resolution in the sense of because human body is in centimeters but we are looking for five meter or six meter layers in the subsurface which is the actual resolution of seismic so here is a comparison of um, of different uh, parameters one is frequency another is depth and wavelength with resolution so over here if you observe when you have uh, actually your frequency is inversely proportional to the wavelength so you have the high frequency small wavelength low frequency large wavelength so same thing is explaining in this figure so let's say you have high frequency and you if you look at the resolution so resolution will be increasing in this way but the penetration will be decreasing with uh, frequency. So that's the actually um, concept of resolution and penetration here. So uh, if you look at the high frequency, obviously we have the less diffraction response and low frequency have the high diffraction response, which is actually uh, we have seen in the previous example. So then the high frequency will need shorter migration aperture because we have the less diffraction. So if you have the high, uh, low frequency or the high diffraction, then you need longer migration aperture. So that was a summary of understanding the diffraction and what are the uh, relation with frequency, resolution, wavelength and the migration aperture. So here is one uh, real example. So this is actually before pre preserving diffraction. So you can see the flanks of the hyperbolas are not very clear, but when we preserve the diffraction, so you can see the diffractions are appearing here. So this is before, this is after. So this is actually a seismic response and this is the migrated data. So here you can see this is, these are diffractions appears here. So once you migrated you can observe this is a migrated this is apex and this is migrated obviously it is moving a bit down because of the dipping reflector as i mentioned in the previous lecture so that's all about the seismic diffraction uh, thank you so much